Okay, let's take a look at this typical GED style word problem. Ling owns a coffee cart in the mall. She is analyzing expenses and income to increase profit. The expenses include renting the 600 square foot space in the mall for $2,500 per month. And then it says, what is the rental cost in dollars per square foot that Ling pays for her coffee cart space? Now, whether you realize it or not, this is actually a slope application problem, which is why it's very likely to show up on the GED. But you don't have to know a thing about slope in order to solve a problem like this. In fact, I love it when I get problems like this because this problem tells me exactly what to do. Look at this phrase. It says, what is the rental cost in dollars per square foot? Whether or not you know it, this right here is a little cheat message to you that tells you exactly what to do. It says start with the dollars. And I know how many dollars I'm paying for my uh, space in the mall. I'm paying $2,500, so I'm going to start with those dollars. And then I'm going to per it. Per literally means divide. In fact, we often use a slash to abbreviate the word per because um, people know that per literally means divide. And we're going to divide that $2,500 by what? By the square foot. And look, I already know the square foot in this problem. It's been given to me. It says 600 square foot. And so this problem's super easy. I'm just going to literally take the dollars and per it by the square foot. Now, so $2,500 divided by 600 square feet. And when I type it into my calculator, I'm just going to ignore those units and just type 2500 divided by 600 and I get this number 4.16666 and it goes on like that and there's no rounding directions in the problem but hello we're supposed to understand something about this we're supposed to understand the unit I did dollars per square foot so if I'm talking 4.16666 uh, what it's 4.16666 dollars or money, and we know where money ends. As far as we're concerned, unless you're at the gas station, money always ends after two decimal places because our smallest piece of money that we have is a cent, or a cent is one one hundredth of a dollar, and so we stop in that hundredths place. Okay, so I'm going to chop my number right there, but be very careful. You can't just throw away numbers without considering their worth. So what you're going to need to do is examine the next number, the number after the hundredths place, and decide is it big enough to matter. If you're more than halfway there, if you're five or higher, this number is bigger, big enough to matter. And so we can't just throw it away with no consequences. What we're going to do is we're going to bump the number in the hundredths place up one. And so we're going to say that's about $4.17 a square foot per square foot. And this is not any math for you to do this feet squared, guys. This is literally just how mathematicians write the unit square feet because we're too lazy to spell the word square. So there you go, $4.17 per square foot.